Good day, folks. Uh, Jim here from Orchard Forex. It's Saturday, the fifteenth uh, of August. Uh, well, the week's uh, trading has just finished. Uh, stocks uh, were pretty flat at the end of the Friday session after the uh, U.S. Uh, retail sales uh, failed to meet expectations, and the uh, S&P once again just fails to make a, a new all-time high. Um, but possibly it's just biding its time before heading higher uh, at some stage next week. It seems to me that could be the way of things to come. Um, the metals, uh, they are going through the washing machine effect as uh, traders get cleaned out after the excessive volatility that we saw last week. Uh, the large rise up to uh, 20, 70 odd and then the $200 an ounce falling gold uh, pretty much uh, uh, wiped the market out I think and uh, since then it's been very choppy but uh, pretty much indecisive. Uh, the US dollar, the dollar index didn't do a lot as you can see, it ended down the, a week, uh, the day 0.15 at 93.10. This is a daily chart and uh, it just appears to be consolidating. The, um, the daily uh, it indicators seem to be turning up from slightly oversold uh, and it could be I think that the next few days uh, or at least until midweek we're just going to chop around here. Uh, if we do go forward to the weekly charts though, as you can see the indicators are pointing uh, decisively lower um, and if we can break this from 93, 10, 15 level then uh, it could be that we head back down towards this uh, major FIBO uh, area at 91 and three quarters. That's uh, some way off yet, and we'll need to we'll need to have a catalyst to make that happen. But it does appear that that is the way of it for the time being. So uh, before we go and look at the charts, I'll just go through to the uh, trend table, and um, there's not an awful lot that stands out really. The euro does look as though it could be headed higher over the next uh, day or so. Uh, otherwise, things are rather neutral. There's a lot, a lot of blue, particularly in the FX crosses um, on the map. Uh, the the commodities also uh, rather indecisive, as as well as the stock markets really. And uh, as I'll show you in the calendar minute, I think we've probably got to wait till midweek until we see anything major. The really interesting thing for me though at the moment is uh, Aussie Kiwi, which looks as though that's about to break, uh, possibly a fair bit higher. Uh, the RBNZ were fairly um, bearish in their outlook uh, last week at the RBNZ meeting and then on Friday we had the uh, RBA governor Philip Lowe suggest that Aussie rates are going to remain on hold at uh, a quarter of a percent for some time to come possibly uh, years so what uh, that's uh, meaning is that uh, while uh, the RBA is signaling that we uh, the Australia will not go to negative rates the RBNZ are taking the opposite decision and su suggesting that that could be a possibility. So the cross uh, is moving in the Aussies' favour and we'll go and have a look at that chart in a second. Before then we'll just take a quick look, look at the calendar for the coming week and there's not a lot out on um, Monday. Uh, the uh, main event on Tuesday I think will be the RBA minutes uh, at which uh, probably a repeat of uh, what Philip Lowe said on uh, Friday at the uh, monetary policy uh, testimony to, to Parliament. Uh, Wednesday, there's not an awful lot out early on the, the UK CPI, but the main event of the uh, week I think will be the FOMC minutes. The FOMC minutes will be released on Wednesday and could hint at a major policy adjustment from the Fed uh, ahead of the next FOMC meeting on the September the 17th. Uh, there are increasing expectations of an easing in monetary policy uh, at the September meeting, opening the way for further uh, monetary stimulus and if the Fed want to make the market aware of what they intend to do in order to pre prevent a nasty surprise, uh, it's possibly uh, likely that this will be the place that they do it. Although uh, we should also look further ahead. Uh, the annual Jackson Hole Symposium will take place on August the 27th and 28th. And that could be the uh, venue for any major policy adjustment. So it's worth keeping an eye on. Um, in the meantime, the other major event of the week will be the uh, ECB minutes uh, here. I don't think they're not going to have quite so much effect on the market. Um, and then uh, on Friday, we get the preliminary uh, PMIs uh, coming out, uh, composite um, uh, manufacturing and uh, sales uh, PMIs. But it'll be the FOMC minutes, I think, that everyone's looking towards. And I doubt there'll be an awful lot of action before then. Having said that, the uh, other major event that traders will be watching closely uh, this week will be for any uh, resolution between the, De re the uh, Republicans and the Democrats with regards to the uh, US employment assistance package. 
and any breakthrough would be positive for the markets but this uh, may yet be put on hold until next month as the uh, US Senate takes a break and of course we've also got a US election coming up uh, in about 75 days which uh, has kind of gone on under the radar given the pandemic but uh, that's going to take uh, increasing amounts of uh, airspace. Anyway, with enough of that, we'll, uh, we'll go and have a look at the charts. OK, so here we have a weekly euro chart. And the interesting thing about that is uh, that the euro has managed to close for the first time just above this very long term uh, resistance line that goes all the way back to, if we go to a monthly chart, all the way back here to sort of 2007. So uh, that being the case, the, the monthly charts are very slightly uh, positive. They look uh, vaguely constructive. I don't think the euro is going to run away on the top side. That's, there's plenty of problems uh, of its own. But the, the, the weekly charts uh, are also pointing higher. So it does seem to me that uh, at some stage, we'll now go back to the dailies. Uh, now, the dailies are looking a bit toppish. So I think, as I said before, uh, until the FOMC minutes, it seems to me that we could just thrash around in the current range below 119 but probably above so 117 until Wednesday. If we do take out this uh, 119.10 level which was the high of a couple of weeks ago then uh, we're going to be looking at a, a move towards 120, 121 um, but uh, I don't really see an awful lot until then. It's, it probably is a range trade and I would be buying, I, will I be buying dips around 117 at the moment, selling them at 119 uh, if we see that much uh, action but uh, longer term, it does seem to me that US dollar could stay under pressure, as we saw in the weekly charts of the dollar index. Dollar yen, I'll leave alone. That's not doing an awful lot at all. It's just thrashing around. Sterling, a bit the same as the euro. Um, it, uh, it's not doing an awful lot, but it has uh, It's taken out this, uh, well, this is a five-year trend line, but it's, it's closing just above that. Possibly we might, are going a little bit higher. But with Brexit talks uh, and all the other problems in the UK, I, I'm, I'm not getting too bullish on sterling. Uh, the cross euro, euro sterling is not doing an awful lot. That's pretty uh, neutral right now. But uh, if, if anything else, I probably would rather be long than short sterling, uh, given the, uh, the these are pointing slightly higher. And we're, we're above the 200 week moving average. If go back to the daily charts. It's not doing an awful lot. It could be building a flag for another move up here, back towards this uh, these series of tops here, where that would take us up to uh, sort of 136. But I don't think we're going anywhere there yet. Uh, there, there's all these highs here to be taken out. So, um, But it's, it might be that we're building uh, for, for the next move higher. But once again, the dailies at the moment are pointing lower. So I, I would think for the next couple of days at least, more of, more of this sideways choppy action. Uh, I won't bother with the dollar Swiss. The Aussie, um, well, it's it's kind of tracked sideways uh, above 71. In the short term, this is a four hour chart, we really need to hold about for sort of 71 and a quarter. Um, below there could see a bit of a deeper correction. Back down, or I don't know, to sort of 70 and a half, somewhere around there, that this this low, which ties in with this high here. Um, but uh, there's, there's not an awful lot of data to come out of the Aussie this week. Uh, and the, day, the four hours are pretty flat. The daily charts very mildly pointing lower. Um, but the weeklies are pointing hard, but we have the 200 week moving average sitting right in front of us. So that's uh, something to be aware of. Uh, I think pretty much the same applies with the Kiwi. If we go and look at a, a weekly Kiwi chart, it uh, it's it looks as though it's already topped out actually, for, particularly following that uh, uh, RBNZ announcement last week. We're currently sitting on the 100 week moving average, which ties in with this uh, downward sloping uh, trend. Uh, well, previously resistance now becomes support, and we're seeing on this on the 50% pivot of this uh, whole uh, whole move. Um, as I say, if I was going to be short the Kiwi, I, I think I'd probably do it against the Aussie more than anything, uh, because if the US dollar does weaken. The Kiwi is going to find support against the uh, the dollar, but uh, Aussie Kiwi, as I will, I'll show you in a second. I, I do kind of like that higher. In fact, we'll go and have a look at that right now. Okay, so here we have a Aussie Kiwi weekly chart, and as you can see, we're at levels last seen in sort of October 2018, and uh, it's looking pretty good to me. All the chart time frames are pointing higher. This is a weekly; looks as though it's picking up speed. Um, the monthly charts, likewise, they're, they're looking pretty okay. 
Uh, we should point out though that the 100 week moving average is uh, is just coming into play here. So that's going to hold it up a bit. And, and the weeklies, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, the monthlies are not showing much momentum as you'd expect. I and mean, we've had this uh, sideways choppy action since 2013. So I, I wouldn't expect the monthlies to be showing too much, but if anything, they're, they're looking slightly positive. Uh, the daily charts are also, let me just, uh, so the daily charts are looking positive and the four hourlies also not looking too bad at all. Uh, and it's a, just a steady drift higher. I, I kind of like it. Uh, let's go back to the monthlies here to see where the targets would be. Now we need to take out this 100 month moving average, as I say, that's at around, well, it's basically 110. Uh, if we can do that, the, this high here, one 111.70, and then these highs here, 113, and onto the uh, FIBO, it's a 114 plus. Um, we have closed the, uh, uh, well, at the moment we're trading above the 23.6%, uh, but this is monthly, so we need we need to finish the month above uh, 108.70, but we've got some time to go before then. But uh, it's worth keeping an eye on, and I think that's the best of the crosses. So that's enough with FX. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at the stock markets. So here we have a daily S&P chart. And as you can see, we've just failing the last couple of three days. We've just been failing to take out this uh, all time high seen before the uh, pandemic sell off. And I think for the time being, uh, that's likely to remain the case. The, uh, the, indice, uh, the indicators are not showing an awful lot of action. The RSI is actually maybe running out a little bit of steam here, but uh, I think if we are going to see a move, we'll probably bide our time until Wednesday. If the uh, Fed do make any uh, major announcement uh, uh, in, or provide any guidance in the FOMC minutes uh, as to what they will say at the FOMC meeting, then I think uh, we can see uh, a spike higher, but uh, until we uh, see that on Wednesday, uh, I think it's probably a range trade just below just below these highs. If, if the Fed uh, less dovish than the market thinks, then we could see a bit of a sell-off in the S&P. But I don't think it's going to be huge, and I'd be looking to buy dips. Just quickly on the Aussie stock market, uh, this is a daily chart, and as you can see, we're pretty much trapped between the 200 and the 100-day moving average. I suspect that's going to remain the case early in the week. Uh, we, we might have another test of the top side. But uh, overall, I think it was going to remain choppy, uh, at least until Wednesday uh, when we get some direction from the Fed and uh, we'll take it from there. The, the weeklies, I have to say, still look pretty good, though. Uh, and we have closed once again between the 200 and the 100 week moving average. And uh, for the time being, I think that remains range bound. But with the, uh, the, the uh, weekly indicators looking pretty well uh, underpinned, I think we could head higher the monthlies. Are not doing an awful lot, so maybe uh, maybe I'm a bit premature there. But uh, I think I'd rather look to the top side with these these weekly charts, looking to take out this hundred week moving average and move back up towards sort of 6200, perhaps. Uh, we, we shall see. Uh, just finally, gold and silver, which I'm staying well clear of. All right, here's a gold chart, and as you can see, it's been highly volatile. Uh, 2070 straight back down to 18 1855. So what, two hundred and twenty dollar sell off, uh, and then uh, back up to nineteen nineteen fifty or so. Uh, it's uh, it's all too hard basket. It, it, it might be wonderful for the uh, the day traders, but uh, for longer term traders, it's it's a bit uh, tricky. If anything, the the dailies still look pretty heavy, and I think another test of the downside wouldn't uh, shouldn't or shouldn't be ruled out. The uh, the weeklies though still look pretty positive, uh, while the monthlies also look very positive. So if we were to see another sell-off in the dailies, you'd probably be looking to, to buy it down around this uh, FIBO support area um, and hopefully look, looking for then a, a test of the top side. If we were to see a rally early in the week, uh, I think at this, or this, or this 20, 70 area, uh, I'd probably be a seller at the first attempt, but I'd keep stop losses pretty tight above there because um, a dovish Fed uh, could uh, give the gold market a new impetus to, to move to the top side. Same applies to silver, really. Uh, I'm staying well clear of that's a weekly chart. Here we are. Silver's, the volatility in silver has made gold look uh, pretty demure, and uh, we've had sort of 15 percent moves every or on some days in silver. Once again, the dailies look uh, heavy. Uh, the, uh, the 
weeklies though look uh, pretty pretty good. Um, I'd I'd really still steer clear from that though. Uh, oil, well, that's a difficult one. It's done nothing for weeks and weeks. And uh, those of you who've seen these videos previously, uh, the, this resistance that I've been pointing out for probably over a month now uh, still pretty much holds. Uh, I think uh, eventually we could uh, we could take it out on the top side. Uh, the dailies which had become overbought have now come back to pretty much neutral, but we haven't sold off. Uh, where th this neckline is uh, major resistance, uh, and we've also got the 200-day moving average, the pink line, and this FIBO resistance here of this fall. So that, that's pretty strong, pretty strong stuff. Uh, but the weeklies do look cool, and I think uh, they 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 look cool for a move higher. Where th this is the neckline of the very major head and shoulders, which allowed silver to go down to zero so we, we got the head here at sort of 78 bucks silver as you remember traded down to zero if we uh, if we can take out this neckline at all and that's at about the 43 level uh, then i think we can see a move back towards the uh, 200 uh, what do we week moving average which is that's at around 55 bucks but that's a long way off at the moment but that's kind of my thinking and that uh, anything anything below sort of 40 bucks is probably not a bad buying area looking for an eventual uh, run to the top side. Anyway, that's about it for this week. Uh, there's a daily update put out on orchardforex.com every day um, on, on the blog, but uh, I'll, I'll do a video, I'll probably do a video on Thursday once uh, the we know what the outcome of the FOMC minutes are. So uh, until then, uh, trade well and uh, we'll be back soon. Cheers.